All right, today we're gonna to be assembling Tool's new LED board. It's pretty darn sweet because you don't have to have hex inverter chips and transistors, and there's a lot more modes. Really compact, and I think the only stick you couldn't fit it in would be a Namco stick that's dual modded. Next on the list, we have a 28 pin integrated circuit, two 10 pin resistor arrays, a 6 pin resistor array, and finally, you're going to have two 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors. One of mine has longer leads, but it's okay. Now we're going to get on to the list of tools that you need. You're going to need a soldering iron. Any cheap one works, 15 to 25 watts is great. Don't expect to pay more than 8 or 9 bucks for one. Then we have some rosin core solder. You can cut this with some diagonal nose pliers, which are also required. Not only for trimming up solder, but to also clean up your board later. Some sort of desoldering device. I use a pump, but there are plenty other things such as solder suckers or copper braided wire. Optionally, a wire stripping device and some wire. As far as assembly goes, this is optional, but for installation, it is required. Finally, if you have some spare resistors laying around that you want to use, feel free. More on that later. Alright, here we have a half soldered on IC socket. I accidentally soldered this on because I thought the camera was recording, but then it turned off on me. Anyways, this comes clipped on, but you need to solder it on to ensure good connection. The solder and soldering iron in hand, get ready to solder it on. Alright, I'm going to slow it down just in case you're kind of new to this. When the tip and the solder touch, the solder starts to melt right here. Some of the rosin core starts to burn, but this is perfectly okay. Pull both away, and you'll leave a nice little metallic nipple where the solder point once was. Right here you can kind of see what it looks like. Alright, repeat this process with the rest of the pins. And I'm also doing this with the IC sockets on this time instead of off like I did with my chimp assembly. I really don't like them, but at least more people will be able to understand what I'm doing. Alright, this looks good and clean, and be sure to check and make sure that the solder isn't touching between any two points. Mine's good. I'll show you how to fix one in just a second if you do happen to have any solder bridges. Alright. Now, check your IC for a little notch on it. It'll be on one side. You're going to want this notch to line up with the silk screen notch on the PCB. This means it'll be facing away from all the small letters on the bottom. You just need to press it in. If you're like me and having a little bit of trouble, you can use a pair of pliers to bend in some of the pins so it'll snap in easier to the IC sockets. Now, just push it in. It should be snugly attached to the IC sockets. We're good to go with this. Next up are the capacitors. Just push it through either C1 or C2. The capacitors are exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. They also don't have a polarity to them, so you can't solder them on backwards. Solder on like before. Now I've intentionally created an error that happens a lot. But then since my skilled hands kind of fixed it for me, I had to intentionally mess up again. Here we have a problem known as a solder bridge. These two points have the same solder melted to both points. You do not want this. There are many ways to do this, but you need to make sure that 
Number one, the solder is not touching both points. This is where a desoldering device comes very handy. To use it, just melt some of the solder and then suck it away. My pump is spring-loaded, so whenever I push a button, it just sucks up the solder. Now we're going to put this on the right way. The problem usually stems from using too much solder. To fix this, use thinner solder or don't push as much solder against the soldering iron while you're soldering. Now we're going to trim off these excess leads using diagonal nose pliers. You may be tempted to trim them like this, of using the middle to cut it like a wire. When you look at it from the side, you really haven't trimmed all of it off. To use it best, use the very tip to trim as close as possible to the solder points. There, to check for a good soldering job, just tug on it lightly and it shouldn't budge. This is good. Now just repeat this process with the other capacitor. Now we can apply resistor rays, or not necessarily. If you want to place it on like so, feel free to, but you have other options if you'd rather not. You can use a little piece of jumper wire like this, it's kind of shaped like a magnet, and you just need to connect holes that are next to each other using it. You may need to use pliers to kind of bend it into place properly, but it will look kind of like this. Repeat for every other hole. All in all, you'll have 13 pins together. Or, if you've got some resistors laying around, you can use them to go from hole to hole and modify how much current your LED lights are going to be getting. The resistor arrays that come with the board are 150 ohms. The arrays included are 150 ohms. If you want to draw less current, go higher. If you want to have more current, go lower or just use the jumper wire. Higher resistances can be useful if you're having problems with your controller getting constantly disconnected by your system because it's drawing too much power. Using a lower amount of resistance or just plain jumper wire will help your lights if they're really dim, say if you're using a PS2 controller, which runs at 3.3 volts, unlike PS3 controllers or Xbox 360 controllers, which run at 5 volts. You may also have problems with dim lights if you're using a wireless controller, because these have lower voltages as well. Anyways, I'm just going to use the included resistor arrays like most people will. If they don't place easily, check the pins. One of them might be bent a little bit to the side. This is what happened to me. It should slide right on like so. However, they'll fall off very easily, so you need to solder them on. I have to use one hand to hold it in place while I solder on some of the pins. So I'm going to melt solder onto my tip beforehand and then apply it to a pin to stick it in place. Now I accidentally created a solder bridge, so I'm going to fix this. But I don't have to desolder this one because there's not a lot of solder connected. So I'm going to drag my soldering iron between the two points to clean up that little bit of solder. See? It's all clean. Now I'm just going to solder the pin from the other side to make sure it's secure before I solder in the middle points. There, soldered on. Now, continue the soldering process as before with the IC sockets. 